Although Visual Studio automatically creates the basic elements of an HTML page for you, it's important to understand the purpose of each element. In this lesson, you'll manually create the different parts of a structured HTML web page. To begin, open the HTML test sample file from your sample files folder. and open emptypage.aspx in source view. This page only contains the bare bones of an ASPX web page. First, look at the page tag at the very top of the screen. You'll notice that it is enclosed in percent tags. In ASP.NET, it is actually possible to place c -sharp code directly onto an HTML web page by placing it between percent tags. ASP.NET's precursor, simply known as ASP, had no code behind files, so all of the c -sharp code was placed directly onto the page inside percent tags. Since ASP.NET introduced code behind files, it's rare to see this done today. The page tag is never sent to web browsers and is used instead to inform ASP.NET which programming language and code behind file to use for this page. You will never have to change this line during this course. Next, look at the doctype tag. The doctype tag is the first thing that a web browser reads. It tells the web browser that this is an HTML file and should be interpreted accordingly. Again, you should never need to change this line. The next tags you'll see are opening and closing HTML tags. These tell the browser that the code inside the tags is standard HTML code that conforms to the W3C standards. Click between the HTML and EndHTML tags and type a head tag. The head tag doesn't contain any of the page's content, but instead is used to store other information about the page. You'll learn more about the head tag in Lesson 2.4. Everything that you actually see in a web browser is contained between two body tags. In the last lesson, all of the text that you added was nested inside the body tags. So add a new line after the end of the head tag and add a body tag. If you look back at default.aspx, you'll notice that the only thing missing from the page is the form tag. You'll learn more about forms in Lesson 2.12. For ASP.NET controls to work correctly, they need to be nested inside form tags. When an HTML tag is marked with runat equals server, it becomes available to ASP.NET instead of being a normal, static tag. This means that you can modify its contents using c -sharp code, which you'll start doing in Lesson 3.1. For this reason, any ASP.NET controls have to be inside a form with runat equals server, or they will not work correctly. Although you could place static HTML content outside the form tag, it's best to keep all of your page's content between the form and end form tags. ASP.NET will only allow you to have one form with runat equals server per page. You'll learn more about forms in Lesson 2.12. Since ASP.NET controls will be displayed on the web page, 
the form tag needs to be inside the body tags. So click inside the body tags and type form ID equals form1 run at equals server. You've now created the full framework of an ASP.NET web page, capable of using ASP.NET controls and c -sharp code. Of course, this is normally created automatically when you add a new page to your project. Close Visual Studio now, saving your changes if prompted. You've now completed Lesson 2-3. Understand the ASPX page structure.